Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald near Camp Point out in the country where the barns are. You know, recently a, a member of the Camp Point Historical Society called us and said, we're doing something a little different this year. We're gonna have a barn tour. And I thought, well, historic barns, you know, who doesn't love historic barns? And then when I found out that the Gunther barn here where we are starting is actually lived in now as a home, I thought, well, this could be a lot of fun. And Pat Doyle, Grace, uh, you're a member of the board and you've yeah, been around yes. for, uh, th th this, this particular historical society for a while and you all yes. have had annual events, tours, but this is the first year for a barn tour, isn't it? Right. We had a lot of people that said they were interested. We did a porches and pies house tour. We did a, a cemetery tour and now we're doing this tour. And, a, and bar, like I say, yes. barns are fun because they're usually in a beautiful place and the history of barns is fascinating because yes. people built barns it, it was the lifestyle choices that uh -huh. they built. You know, their animals and their, and their food and everything had to be treated in a very specific way, depending on the way they mm -hmm. farmed and lived, and their barns reflected that lifestyle. Yes, they did. Now, tell us about the Historical Society and how these tours benefit the Historical Society. Okay, the Historical Society of Camp Point was started in the early 1990s, and it was reorganized recently, and we're trying to raise money to digitize the Camp Point journals, which go back to 1870s, so that families can come in, put their name in, and quickly get information about their families, or the town, whatever they're looking for. Yeah, okay, so, so what it enables you to, okay, you take all the old newspapers, uh -huh. and if you digitize that, then you can use that as, as digital files, and you could send those that's by email, et cetera, and then you could easily look up anything you want. Yes, that's, that's the idea. idea. That's, that's a great idea. That's the idea behind it. Well, yes. good luck with this tour and okay. with your other tours in the future. What we're gonna do during this program is see three of the barns that are on the tour and, and get tours through the barns uh, by some people who really know what they're talking about. Right. So, thank you. Okay. You wouldn't believe that this comfortable and very livable space is a former barn, uh, but in fact it is. Uh, in the 1880s, the Gunthers built this barn. Uh, it's been lived in by several families. The latest one, as luck would have it, is Randy and Marcy Phillips. M Randy is the shooter, our photographer for Illinois Stories. Uh, now, there's Randy. Hi. Randy's gonna give us a tour through his personal living space. Uh, he, he and Marcy's uh, barn turned home, and it's the first on the stop of this tour. So it's very interesting. As you can see, really nice spaces here. Um, this would have been, correct me if I'm wrong, Randy, this would have been um, an area, probably not an animal area, but a work area and a storage area Exactly, here. yeah, exactly. It's storage and work and um, uh, different areas of the, of the building was for livestock and just for general storage, like you said. Well, come on in here into the kitchen, if you don't mind showing sure. us your kitchen, because it's really gorgeous. You know, the flooring is new and clean and everything is as modern as you can get. <laughs> and uh, this is your, like, year-round kitchen, right? Correct, uh, so yeah. So this we, is what you use year-round. We'll do... Um, anywhere from um, uh, eight to 10 months downstairs here at the house every year. Uh, wintertime we move upstairs just because heat rises obviously and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's easier to heat the whole place and there's just two of us here. And, and barns are notoriously, you know, the, the weather really affects the, the living area in a barn, doesn't it? The, the, um, we, we, uh, it, when it gets really cold here, we use um, uh, wood heat. We have uh, a wood burning furnace outside that uh, mm -hmm. keeps the place uh, nice and toasty during the winter. But uh, we'll, we'll um, uh, come down here to cook and things like that, but upstairs during the winter. But yeah, it's it, the, the basic structure internally mm -hmm. is still um, still a barn. Yeah. When you live in a barn, Randy, you have a lot of, you have a lot of chores to do, don't you? I mean, oh, so you've got boy. a lot of these scratched <laughs> off, you know, the stair handrails are gone and, and you know, you cut overhanging trees and the front porch has been repaired, but you still got the wood furnace serviced and the driveway graveled and the pond yeah. found. You got a lot to do, don't we you? Have, well, and weekly, we uh, we have about seven acres we have to mow, so we do mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. on a weekly basis. Yeah, it, and you're glad when winter comes around for that reason, For that part, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this would have been the work area, and then down here, it's a level down. This would have been... This would have been the level that the animals came in and, and I guess they lived in here, slept in here. Yeah, the, the cows and things, would they'd bring them in here and, um, 
in the the evening and stuff and and have them in here to uh for protection and everything like that you're not a collector or anything are you Randy? well you know i've got a couple <laughs> things here and there i uh i'm looking at an old jukebox <laughs> that's a, that's an actual working uh, 1950s jukebox right? there we mm -hmm. uh we fire that up every so often when we have folks over mm -hmm. uh i've got a, an affinity for uh antique and obsolete uh, <laughs> electronics. Uh, well, down here I've got a 1920s Atwater Kent radio. Um, this bar here, uh, I built that actually myself. That's um, Oh, that's nice work. Thank you. Yeah. That's uh, a, an actual old barber's chair from the 20s. Mm -hmm. Up above over here, that is a actual working 1948 television. I don't have it turned on right now. Wow. But uh, it actually, we powered up every uh, Halloween and show Dracula uh -huh. on it or something like okay. that. Okay. So. Okay, so you got a bathroom in here? Correct. Bathroom that's, and laundry mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was the animals and that's sort of a den area. Yep. Dining room, kitchen we saw. And I guess this, you use this as the master in, in the good months and then when it's cold you move upstairs. Right, right. Yeah, we come in here and, and this is um, Mm -hmm. um, like I said, about uh, eight, nine to ten months a year we're in here. Very nice. And of course, yeah. a full bathroom there. Yeah. Um, and this is your front hall area. Um, and I guess anybody that comes in, they don't come, never come in the back. Of course, that's where the pond and the dock or the deck is. Yeah. This is the the main entrance to the house. Yes, correct. Okay. We uh, it's just it's just a regular old entrance way. There's a lot of the uh, mechanicals for the house are out uh, out here on the left as well. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what, one nice thing about that, and you can see some of the original curvature of the ceiling and everything. This is probably the way it looked when it was a barn, or do you think somebody added this? I think this was probably added, but I, it was obviously a, a lifted area. I know above us, right where we're at right now, I was uh, uh, they had some storage for hay and things like that mm -hmm. as well. So, and, and that's the second floor that you and Marcy use when it gets cold. That's right. where you live up there. Right. And that would have been probably grain storage. I think that's what most Yeah, grain, hay, right. and things yeah. like that, sure. But it's, sure. it's remarkable what you've done up there. Can we go up there? Absolutely. Okay. Let's go. Let's do Okay, wouldn't have been carpeted many many years no, ago, would no, it, Randy? No, probably a ladder coming up here too. It, well, of stairs. it's you know, I think they could probably see the audience could probably see how steep that is, and I, I would assume that that would have been a ladder. Um, people were in pretty good shape back then to be yeah. able to come no, up that, and down that, a ladder. That could could be a tumble if you took it too fast. Oh so, man! Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, very very nice. Now this is I don't know this is a lot of living space for two people, but like you say in the winter time, this is your this is where you come. Yeah yeah we. Uh, we uh, are very comfortable up here in the winter. It's it's very spacious. We use this wall here as our television. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a projector. Oh, above I see. Over you have here. a projector. Okay, so yeah. you don't need to put a screen up. That's your screen. Yep. That wall yep. is your screen. Have it okay. made that way. Neat. I have a little museum to a to a band I play with every so well, often. Well, let's take a look in. There. Let's oh, take a look okay. in. There. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The the Maulers is the the name of the band. The Mauler. <laughs> and uh, we play about once a year or so, something uh -huh. like that. We have a bunch of uh, memorabilia from different. Uh, different extravaganzas yeah. that we've done in the past. So. Got to keep those skills up once a year practice. Oh yeah, yeah, the, there we go, Sarah. This is yeah. excellent. Okay, so this would have been, the I guess the grain bin, this would have been, everybody feeds the hay and the grain up to the, low, the highest level so they can just throw it down for the animals. Correct. And that's what this would have been used for. And we're told that a, um, an old uh, a wagon was stored up in here at one point as mm -hmm, well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now this, this is where our dogs go and look out the window every day when we're coming oh, home. Oh, so. well, that could be happier than a dog in the country, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, it, all these, some of these rooms step up, so I guess, right. I don't know if these were added or if the barn was built You know, I, way, honestly, but. I don't know for sure what, what some of the situation on this was. Mm -hmm. I know when it was converted, they did a lot of work to it and stuff. This is an office that I use. I do a lot of uh, production and voice work uh -huh. um, for different uh, companies around the country and it's stuff, so mm -hmm. I do that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and then, uh, of course, the, okay, and here's another kind of little office room, space, craft room, right? Yeah. Craft room, okay. And then another uh, full bath back here. Yes. And yeah. uh, very purple. Very purple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, Marcy and her mother's influence in there. Marcy's, Marcy's mother was very, uh, very much into the color blue and, mm -hmm. and uh, still is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice place. We've we moved out here in 2006. We've um, uh, had nothing but fun out here, and we... we Hope to stay for another 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you get, it'll take you 20 years to get that list of chores <laughs> done. And I'm thinking 30 or so. <laughs> Just hope to live that long, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Randy and Marcy Phillips, thanks for the tour. This, uh, anybody coming on the uh, Camp Point barn tour would get a chance to go through this house and stay as long as you like. We hope to see everybody. Okay. Well, we're just east of Camp Point with Dave Moore, who knows this barn. Actually, 
this this property has been in your family for a while. Almost and when, when you were a teenager and a young man, you lived on this property, exactly. didn't you? Exactly. Yeah, so you know this barn pretty well. Do you ever work in this barn? Oh yeah, <laughs> knocked out a few stalls. <laughs> oh, you did, huh? So there was live, this was used for livestock and for the storage of equipment and, and, right. and, and grain as well? Horses, cattle, uh, pigs, sheep. We've had all kinds of livestock in there and then of course, corn and beans from the field, wheat. So it's mm -hmm. very much a working barn. What's the name of this barn? We call it the Humpke Barn. Humpke. It's been in the Humpke family for almost 100 years. Well, tell us about that ownership of the Humpke family. Well, this started out in 1819 as a military track with the bounty lands for the War of 1812. Had a variety of owners up until 1923 when my great-grandpa, Charles Humpke, purchased the property from mm -hmm. the Anderson family. And then when he was in the 1940s, deeded this property to my Uncle Edwin, who was one of his sons. And Uncle Edwin actually built the house that we see right behind us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been in the family since then. His daughter-in-law now owns the farm as his, as his heir. Now when do you think the barn was built? We think it was born and built in 1925, a couple years after the, the bought, purchased the property. Mm -hmm. Was this kind of a typical barn for that era? Very common. In fact, we haven't been able to confirm this, but we've had some kind of local people tell us that this was actually based on some plans that they bought at Sears and then used local lumber to put it together. Uh-huh. So this was built sort of in a modern, uh, with right. a modern technique, I guess. It, it, it doesn't use, you'll see inside, it doesn't use any wood pegs or any old style technique. It uses bolts and modern construction techniques, but it also uses recycled materials. So you'll see some older wood logs and things that were re repurposed for this You know, barn. farmers have always been that way, haven't they? Very they don't frugal. throw anything away, and if they can reuse it, they do, don't they? Exactly, yeah. and you'll there'll be good evidence in here. Yeah, well, can, can we go in? Absolutely. Right, let's take a, let's take a walk. Well, David, still smells like a barn in here. <laughs> well, it's been still a while since like there's been barn. livestock, but it's still <laughs> yeah. It worked. It worked. Every it did everything it had to do. Didn't right. It? Exactly. As, as I was mentioning earlier, it's got a ten bays, five on each side. Livestock would have been in the bays on each side. We now store a lot of empty tractors there, mm -hmm. and the center of the aisle would have been kept free for machinery and other access points. Where and, can, and these bays probably would have had a, a, a door of some kind that you could close right, off, right? They would have been, they would have been with fencing or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And over on the left-hand side, there's still access to the hay mound where they would have dropped hay down to the animals that were in those bays. Mm -hmm. um, wh what's this closed off area here? This is a granary. This is where the wheat and oats and corn would have been stored, used for livestock feed. We use it to store tractor tires and so on, mm -hmm. but it would have been fed from the roof with, with an auger and then been filled and then it could have been scooped out or used for the right, livestock. Right, right. And you, you would just scoop it out from here with the gravity right. feed down it and would you have scoop had, it out from here. You can see where it had slats. It would have had slats up the way and you just take a slat out and scoop what you needed and just uh -huh, work your way down the grain. Uh -huh. Okay, that way it didn't all tumble right, out. Right, yeah, all one time. Okay. Now I noticed here that, now here's one of the stalls here, but now you're using it for, what, antique tractors? Yes, these are tractors that have been in the family. This was a tractor built, bought by my great grand, my grandfather back in 1952. Oh, that's a beauty. Same year I was born. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's aged well. Wish I could say the same. <laughs> well, do you ever take it out and show it? Yes, it's very functional. It's, it was farmed with up until the 1980s, 1990s. Yeah. And we do some antique farm shows oh, around neat. the area. That is neat. Um, Okay, now this, these are the, st the uh, ladder that goes up to the second floor, and that would have been where the, uh, where the hay, I assume, was, right. was stored, uh, right? Primarily the hay loft, although we did store corn cobs up there that was used for bedding for the livestock as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. In fact, those corn cobs would have been accessed through this chute in the ceiling where they would have been stored and then dropped down as needed for the horse bedding. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, what, is it better if they... If they, if they uh, decompose a little bit before they, I mean, wh well, why when, would you? Back when the corn was picked and it was originally picked on the ear and it was shelled and then the corn cob was usually pretty well crumbled up. Mm -hmm. So we would store that and use it as bedding for the f animals. Mm -hmm. okay. And of course, they would turn it from grind crushed cob into dust, <laughs> which is my job to get rid of. <laughs> right, and of course, and, and speaking of getting rid of stuff, it's interesting, now this was a concrete floor originally, right? Yes. And it's interesting the way you have, a, he's cut a groove in here, but there was a reason for that, wasn't there? He sloped the concrete so that all the liquid waste would run to the middle and then it would run out of the barn and to be disposed of it elsewhere. It would run out of the barn if you chased it out of the barn, right? If you right? helped With, it. You yeah. scoop it. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Right. And, and we know this was built in 1925 and they had a concrete floor originally because he went ahead and uh, he carved a date in there, didn't he? Yeah, Uncle Edwin was a master concrete worker and everywhere he, every day he did with concrete, he would put a date in it so we kind of mm -hmm. knew when it occurred.
not all barns had concrete floors. No, in that fact, was that was a fairly modern invention back in yeah. the 1920s when the barn was built. Yeah. That was not particularly common. Yeah, that was, that, that was a, a real boon, I think, especially for like no mud, cleaning up was easier, you know. Right. And of course, you had a good solid foundation. Exactly. Um, now, this part back here was not part of the original barn. Right, this was added later. This is, if you look up here, you'll see that this was not the same height. It was added later. This is a corn crib extension, so they store corn on the cob, uh -huh. let it dry. And this also gave them access to the hay mow. The hay mow has a rail that goes all across the top of the main beam and comes out of the barn itself, and then a hay hook would come down. They'd pull a wagon in full of hay, would pick the hay up and put it in the barn, and they'd store it up there. And that rail that we see, that, that's still there. The rail exactly. is still there. Okay. And if you were to look up from the outside, the pulley that was used is still on the outside of the barn, and the hay hook is up in the, outer, in the barn mm -hmm. as well. That almost looks like a cathedral ceiling. That is a beautiful, beautiful structure. There's a tremendous amount of space. I've can entertain the idea of converting it to a wedding venue or whatever, but I, that'd be a lot of work. Yeah, it sure would, but I mean, imagine the amount of work it took to build it originally. My oh, goodness. exactly. A nice thing about a, what's called a gambrel roof, where you've got this two slopes, is the fact that it was more economical to build than a second story wall, and so it actually was cheaper to build and gave more storage space than a standard construction mm -hmm. straight wall mm -hmm. would do. And, and this is interesting. What, this looks like a different part of construction here. Well, what happened was when they added on this shed, they lost access to this door. And so my uncle, being an in, in engineering kind of whiz, decided that he would make this roof removable. So if you see this white panel, yeah. that could be removed entirely. The wagon would be pulled in, the hay would be lofted up into the barn, and then taken the wagon out and the roof re wow. re replaced. He is imaginative. What was his name again? Edwin Humkey. Edwin Humpke. Edwin great was uncle. Quite, a, quite a man, wasn't he? Yeah, and this is an old hay, uh, I don't know what it's called, hay wagon that would have collected the loose hay in, the, in a windrow out of the field and put it on mm -hmm. the wagon. And then, of course, the wagon would bring it in and the hay hooks would put yeah. it up in the barn. Wow. Quite a tour. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Okay, Randy, we're looking at the Four Corners Farm. Yep. Why is it called Four Corners? Uh, it sits in four townships, uh, Clayton, Columbus, um, uh, Concord, and Camp Point. Yeah. So uh, my dad always said he could uh, uh, go from one side of the road to the other and, and he'd be in where the next tax assessor could get him. <laughs> okay, so your dad bought this place in the 60s. Yes. You've been, you're still working it, so you were, you've been working this farm most of your life, yes. haven't you? Yeah, my whole life pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us, about, it says 1895, I assume that's when this barn was built? I, that would be my guess. I don't know that for sure. That's been mm -hmm. up there since uh, my dad bought the farm in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, I, I, I would imagine that's probably was the inception yeah. of the barn. Yeah. Let, let's go inside because sure. I want to see how, how it used to be used and how you're using it now. Yep. Um, I noticed, you know, we were at a barn earlier that had a concrete floor. And uh, this one probably did not have an original concrete floor. No, you can, th this was actually a granary and, and, and dad always said that they would, uh, he thought they drove horses through there. You can see that was where they'd, you know, have wheat or something, corn or something, they'd come out here. But there's the old original floor. Mm -hmm, and my mm -hmm. dad had taken that out and then poured concrete in here. And, and a horse, a horse would, take a, would take a cart through here through and you here, would offload? I imagine they would, just, they would just scoop it out. Uh, there used to, I think actually there's a door there. Mm -hmm. But my guess is they would stand up on... Uh, uh, on whatever wagon they had and just, you know, scoop shovel everything in. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, they had to turn around and scoop everything back out. But uh, these, the, these are ear corn cribs on both sides of here also. Okay, so this was not, this didn't have the stalls for the animals. No, right? this was no, this was, this was simply a, 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 a grain storage and then mm -hmm. upstairs uh, was, was hay, uh, straw, that type of mm -hmm. thing. Now, right, right over here where we, where we came in, there, there's a ladder. Would that have been the ladder to yes. go upstairs? Okay, yes. you don't yep. use that anymore, huh? No, well, I'll tell you what, when I was about 40, I thought I'd get old someday, so I put steps in. <laughs> so we really don't well, use that. Well, that. that was far thinking, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Let's go back a little further. Okay. Um, and you, you still, you, you're using all this space yeah, for something or other, right? Yeah, we use all this right? for storage. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And, uh, 
Um, yeah, we can go in this next room if you want. Let's do. Let's take a look in there. To, to go on upstairs. These it had some pretty good sized uh, beams in it when they when they laid it out. Big step here. Randy, when you get to the second floor, we've noticed in a barn earlier, that there's a lot of room up there. Did they use yep. it all? Yep. Yeah, when, when, when I was a kid, I remember we'd stack straw bales all the way to the roof. So, uh, and wow. when you get that up that far and you get looking over the edge, why well, it's quite a ways down. Well, yeah, so it's kind of it scary. Exciting. If you didn't stack it well, you just might take a big old fall. Yeah, huh? yeah that's all right. Yeah. It's a lot of room up there. Now this, would, would, would this have been built, this this framework here had been built originally with the barn? Yes, yeah, okay. that's the original It's support, structure. it's support yeah. for it. And they used, I can see they used the wooden pegs to put all this together. Mm -hmm. um, you can see here, they didn't use any hardware on this one. And they also used an interesting cut, this, this, uh, this sort of severe diagonal cut that uh, that keeps the big big old beams together, right. huh? Right. That was, that's a piece of that's yeah, a piece they, of Yeah, they were, they were, it was really an art, I think, putting a barn like this together at that time. And I guess a, a group of farmers, friends, and uh, you'd have one engineer and a whole bunch of helpers, and they could probably do it in a couple of weeks, I'll bet. I, I, I would assume that's amazing. right. Amazing, amazing. Um, again, this one too, I mean, as we saw before, there's a rail up there at the very top, at the peak, and, and this, uh, in, this, in this door here, that's where the, you would you would back up your your your, your cart, I guess. I, I think your wagon on the outside mm -hmm. it probably had loose hay or straw in it, mm -hmm. and and then they had a big uh, uh, grabbing device, and mm -hmm. then and then a rope would would go across the barn. They'd have a horse on the other end, and mm -hmm. and he would pull that up, and then they'd bring it across and just drop. The tell loose, you where to drop it. Drop yeah. the loose hay in here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And you do you use this area up here for storage too, don't you? Yeah, we use it just for livestock mm -hmm. equipment, and then kind of some odds and ends pipes and, yeah. and lumber and stuff. Never throw anything away. No, <laughs> no, that's all right. Okay. Hey, you've got another, another a barn on the property that we use for livestock and cattle, yes. I guess, right? Yes. Can we go over there? Absolutely. All right, let, after you. Okay, thank you. Well, Randy, we're about a stone's throw from the old barn. This barn, you can tell it's different. It's a little more modern, isn't yep. it? Yep. Um, because you can see it's, it's built with like concrete block mm -hmm. there and inside it's brick, and we'll go inside, but you can see that it's shape and it's, its use, it, and its usage is different. What would this have been built for? This was strictly a livestock barn, and it was actually built for cattle, and it just had two big mangers on the side, and it had room for about 300, or I'm sorry, 3,000 uh, small square bales, or way lots of loose hay, yeah. and, and uh, uh, so that's really yeah. what it was developed for. You, you, got, some, you got some lambs. Yeah, or you use, I guess. Yeah, huh? yeah, we have uh, developing uh, ewe lambs there, and and uh, that's kind of pretty much what we use this uh, barn for now is developing uh, ewe lambs, and then also when we sort our uh, adults for when they're going to lamb, and and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Why it, yeah. it makes a really nice place. To how do how that. many head do you keep? Um, usually between six and seven hundred. Oh, that's a handful, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's go inside and see what their quarters looks like. It's changed since it was a. Livestock barn head. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, there, there, <coughs> there used to be uh, uh, gates in between these pillars, big wooden gates, and mm -hmm. and uh, you, you'd run your steers in here and so forth. And then there were big where the windows are. The windows were still there, but they had a manger that went all the way to the floor, and then that, that's uh, where the cattle would eat out of and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then there was a dirt lot behind. So. Mm -hmm. And then you, this is mostly a shelter to get your lambs out, or do you feed them in here or birth them in here, or what do you? Uh, pretty much, we just uh, we, we let uh, young lambs in here, and then and then we have some little side pens over here. Where we'll we'll put rams, or uh, sometimes mm -hmm. if uh, uh, to introduce an individual sire to to a certain ewe or something. Mm -hmm. And then we use the middle part of it here uh, when we when we sort our when we sort our ewes. Um, oh, yeah. We 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 have a, have this so we can just run them in the barn and run them around and sort them two mm -hmm. or three different ways. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's yeah. take a stop upstairs. Uh, we're running out of time, but we do have time to take a look upstairs. So I'll sure. follow you, okay? Okay. Well, you still keep hay up here, don't you, Randy? Y yes. Mm -hmm. For your for, for your lambs for, and for our lambs sheep? and ewes, yep. yes. Yep. And uh, originally you said there would have been three thousand bales up here. I can get it. I can see how they would do it. Uh, when you see how, and again, there's so these barns are so massive, oh. and this one looks different because it's got that barrel-shaped top to it. Yeah, so you can really get more up high. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, uh, yes. So now, and it's interesting what you do now. 
we have not seen these circular bales, uh, but this is the way, this is this is how you're doing it now. It's a little different than they used to do it, isn't it? Yeah, not too many people bale small squares anymore. There's just a few uh, a few baled each year, so mm -hmm. uh, we we cut a bigger uh, hole in the barn so we could uh, bring these bigger bales alfalfa up, and then we just uh, use a, a pallet jack to move them around up here, and mm -hmm. then when we uh, uh, need them for young lambs or something. We can just uh, what do you do? Just, just, ro just roll it out the this open. Yeah, we get there? them up here and then just roll them out the yeah. door. And Hope there's no lambs. <laughs> yeah, standing that's there. right. Or nobody's down below. <laughs> that's right. Okay, and then what you do is then you're just able to roll it over into that pen where they where they feed, huh? Yeah, we just use a skid steer and and pick them up, mm -hmm. and then we have feeders that we feed them in. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is fascinating. This would I, I think we said this was probably built in about the 30s. Right. Um, but it's, it's remarkable, you know, nobody had any money in the 30s. So, I mean, to be able to do this, is this was a big investment. Right, right, yes. Well, I want to thank you and everybody that had anything to do with helping us put, put this together from the Camp Point Historical Society. It's been a, it's been a wonderful uh, afternoon. Thank you very much for all your help. Well, well thank yeah, you and appreciate you coming. Right. And you can learn more about this upcoming uh, tour when the pleasure, or from the uh, Camp, Camp Point Historical Society online. With another Illinois story near Camp Point, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.